so here it is described how king parikshit he was he sat down at the bank of ganga but goshami sometimes explain that is not only ganga that is, that was also jamuna so i don't know either it is only jamuna or sometime both the river flows together jamuna and ganga in bhagavatam it is written ganga but in many places i have seen the goshami is explained it was jamuna so whatever it may be both are sacred river and parikshit maharaj he sat down um <coughs> dakshina kule at the southern bank of ganga and uh, everything is described in detail that he sat on a kushak grass kushasan a, a seat made of kushak grass and the root the, that kushak grass was um complete i mean uh, it was uprooted with roots and the kushasan the seat was made with that complete kushak grass which was uprooted with roots and the roots were faced toward the east and he himself king parikshit himself faced toward the north ah, so it is explained here prasila prabhupada explained in the purport that all these um, i mean it is like part of um, rituals it is very very auspicious ah, in devotional life we have to uh, try to maintain all the rules and regulations rituals and as far as possible ah although it is not the main thing uh, but if we are i mean if possible we can maintain all rules and regulations generally sometimes we sit on plastic um, this is made of plastic no <laughs> it is not very auspicious according to uh, vedic standard plastic is uh, not uh, what what to speak of auspicious they are inauspicious <laughs> you understand but kushak grass kushak grass is very very auspicious kushak grass was born from the water sprinkled from the body of uh, baraha incarnation when baraha dev took incarnation then from his body he sprinkled some water and water of uh, garbhada kosham and that water fell on earth and produced kushak grass so kushak grass is considered to be very auspicious and all the symptoms mentioned here that the root should be faced toward the east and uh, the person who is sitting on the kushasan he should face toward the north so like this there are some rules and regulations just like when we chant gayatri in the morning we face towards east uh, noon also we face towards east and evening we face towards north so these are some rules and regulations sometimes you know we may also break you know sometimes rules and regulations are broken by mistake or due to some situation when you are going by car you don't know which is east side or west side you know you are going by train you are chanting gayatri on train so sometimes rules and regulations are broken we are compelled we are you know situation compels us to uh, break the rules so <coughs> the rules are actually secondary ah uh, if you are not lazy and if the situation is favorable we should maintain all the rules and regulations as far as possible there are unlimited rules and regulations if you read hari bhakti vilash <laughs> one one time somebody asked prabhupad e eh, when hari bhakti vilash it is said we should do like this like this prabhupad replied forget your this bilas or that bilas <laughs> you understand i mean prabhupada was not so much fond of following all the rules and regulations actually if you follow all the all the rules and regulations especially for the goshtanandi we are goshtanandi we are supposed to preach is it not but for preaching sometimes we have to you know in different situation it is not that we can maintain all the rules and regulations say for example chaturmasya started and next month is uh, damodar month if you follow hari bhakti vilash it will be very difficult to preach go outside and preach that's why generally they don't go for four months they stay at in some ashram or at home ah and four months of chaturmasya generally 
um, preaching work is not done so much but goshtan only they don't care they go they go and preach under any circumstances uh, so for that sometimes we may you know may break rules and regulations when prabhupad first went to america i was reading in his biography that he was keeping prasadam in a freeze at the top floor and at the bottom somebody was keeping meat have you read that <laughs> yeah so much tolerant prabhupad was for preaching for preaching ah. so for preaching sometimes rules and regulations can be sacrificed even bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur he was so staunch followers of all rules and regulations so one time devotees were not going for pre- preaching um, on ekadashi day so bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur called his disciples why are you not going for going out for preaching so they did reply today is ekadashi oh, we are all engaged in chanting so what is the problem no ekadashi day we take simple prasadam so we feel weak so just now you cook khichdi and take khichdi <laughs> and eat khichdi and go out for preaching it was not the intention but the intention is that preaching is more important than your ekadashi you understand that i heard another story from uh from some devotee that um, uh, lead and harikesh maharaj was asked to go to preach in russia so he replied that in russia vegetarian foods are rare to achieve not available so prabhupada said what is available available only flesh meat so prabhupada said okay you can eat meat and preach <laughs> it was not intention intention but it shows the importance of preaching goshtanandi gives more importance on preaching some or other you have to preach if you care so much all rules and regulations uh, just like we cannot eat food cooked by non devotees but for preaching sometimes may not be non devotee but may not be you may not get pure cook uh, prabhupada used to say blind un- uncle is better than no uncle a blind uncle is better than no uncle <laughs> at least you have an uncle <laughs> you have an uncle so in this way for preaching some adjustment has to be made you will not find everywhere pure cooks uh, you will not find everywhere pure devotees pure association but for preaching we have to sometimes become little lenient in following at least the rituals and external rules and regulations internally uh, our mood our bhavo that is very very important that is very very important ha huh? in many incidents we have seen how krishna gives importance on the bhavo on the mood ha huh? krishna is called bhavagrahi no bhavagrahi ha uh, murkha baduti bisnaya dhira baduti bisnabe ubhayastu samam punnam bhavagrahi janardana hmm? murkha uh, uh, an uneducated devotee he doesn't know sanskrit very well so sometimes he chants mantra you know wrongly wrong pronunciation you know he says wrong grammatically wrong he says om vishnaya namah because in many words this, this aya is there so he thinks it will be vishnaya hmm just like we say gauraya gauraya ah so uh, gauraya or gaurave what what do you say i am also not expert in sanskrit <laughs> so it may be gauraya or gaurave i think gauraya no uh, gauraya so those who are not expert in sanskrit the actual correct word is bisnobe om bisnobe namo mm. but those who are not expert in sanskrit they may say by mistake om bisnaya namo murkha vadati bisnaya dhira vadati bisnobe those who are sober real scholar pandita scholar they say om vishnu be namo pronunciation is correct but murkha murkha means uneducated he says om vishnaya namo pronunciation is wrong but krishna doesn't care for your pronunciation so much if it is not done willingly or negligently or due to laziness krishna doesn't mind uh, if your mood is okay ubhast samang punnam for both the cases your piety is same if you say om vishnaya namo and if you say om vishnave namo in both the cases 
piety will piety will be same if it is done with go, good devotion and good mood so bhavagrahi janardana janardan means who is living within everybody's heart and he is known as bhavagrahi he receives only the bhava only the mood only the love patram pushpam phalam toyam jame bhakta prajachati tadahang bhoktu puritam bhakti yug puritam uh, if you offer with devotion that is the main thing uh, when krishna went as the um what is called uh, rajdut rajdut is what is called in english uh, he went as the uh, uh, ambassador yes ambassador he was a, uh, he went to meet durjadan and dhritarashtra as ambassador of king yudhishthir and he was requesting them that uh, give some okay we don't want fighting fighting means a great loss for both the side so many innocent people will die so it is not good so we will be satisfied that if you give only five villages but durjodhana was so adamant he told i will not give a dust even which can hold at the top of a needle that dust also i will not give this is the best example of being adamant how much adamant he became the property belong to the pandavas the whole kingdom belong to the pandavas but durjodhana was so adamant that he was not ever, Uh, ready to give one dust so then krishna understood <laughs> this person cannot be rectified uh, krishna can force but you know jatachcha se tatha kuru he never forces uh, he gives freedom but you will suffer your uh, the reaction of your karma that is there so then <laughs> after the meeting durjodhana invited him to i mean invited for a feast and the feast was cooked with pride so many nice item he co- i mean he arranged to cook uh, because he thought he will show his opulence to krishna that was pride that whatever you are eating in daraka and whatever we are eating here you must compare you understand you can understand what is our standard and what is your standard cowherd boy <laughs> uh, so he had lot of pride inside his heart there was no tinge of devotion there was no devotion there was no devotional mood there was no emotion so he just was proud and he wanted to show durjodhan that what kind of stand, uh, what standard of food he is eating so then he invited krishna and krishna said no i will not accept your food uh, why no because you did not accept you did not accept my proposal i just asked for five villages you did not accept uh, you wanted to fight so you did not satisfy my desire so i will not eat so then he went to bidura's house without invitation he went to bidura's house without invitation and bidura's wife bidurani she was so happy she, they knew the they knew who krishna was they knew that krishna is god himself they knew they are devotee pure devotee both husband and wife so bidurana became the wife of bidura became like uh, half mad because she was overwhelmed that the supreme personality of godhead the owner of all universes uh, protector of all universes all living entities she was thinking about krishna and she became overwhelmed so there was only banana in bidura's house ripened banana and she took a bunch of banana and she started this very common story uh, the she started what is called peeling peeling banana and she was throwing the banana and the fruit she is throwing and she is giving the skin to krishna not willingly not willingly she was so much absorbed in krishna's thoughts that she became like she is she was not in this world so she gave the skin so krishna could tell okay my dear mother you please Uh, give me the banana why are giving me the skin by mistake generally we will do the same thing no we will say no 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 give them give me the banana you are throwing banana ah but krishna did not say personality of godhead we must understand personality of godhead godhead is godhead so he did not say anything he was chewing banana skin very happily so wha- where is his happiness happiness is in the bhavo 
Krishna's happiness is in the bhava, not in the external rituals, external all these things. If your bhava is pure, if your bhava is pure, then under all circumstances Krishna is satisfied. But these rituals, as far as possible, we should maintain. Uh, due to laziness, sometimes if we if we ignore these rituals, whatever is whatever rituals are. I mean, given by our authorities for performing devotional service also, uh, as far as possible, without being lazy, we should, be, we should follow all these rules and regulations. But, due to some, you know, situation, eat nice food in Durjadana's house, but Krishna ate banana skin in Bidura's house, because there was devotion, emotion, uh, devotional emotion within... Um, Bidra's wife's heart. So that is more important. Hmm. Bhavagrahi Janardana. There are so many stories like this. There is one story in Chaitanya Bhagavat that um, one day a snake charmer, he was singing a song related to Kaliya snake. Uh, Kaliya snake. He, the song was related to Kaliya snake. And the snake charmer, ordinary snake charmer, he was playing that uh, flute with that Kalio sna- uh, song, Mood, you know. Uh, the tune was known to everyone, especially Haridash Thakur was present there. So wh- when he heard that he is singing about Kalio Lila, past times of Kalio, then Haridash Thakur, he was completely absorbed in that thought and he fainted. He fainted and fell down on the ground. So immediately hundreds of people came, someone started touching his feet. Uh, like this, you know, they were giving so much honor to Haridas Thakur. So there was one Brahmin, proud Brahmin, he was standing beside. He is thinking, this is, uh, he is born from a Muslim family. And I am born in a Brahmin family. They are all touching his feet. But I am a by birth a Brahmin, so much qualified, nobody is caring me. So I understand, if I faint like him, if I faint like him, they will honor me, <laughs> you understand? So he did, an, uh, he did a drama, you know. He was doing like this, suddenly fell down beside Haridash Thakur. The snake charmer himself understood that this is drama, you know, <laughs> he is doing drama. So with the flute, he started beating, you know. And other people also came and started beating him. You know, and immediately he stood up and ran away. So, this, you know, bhav, you know, ordinary people also sometimes they can understand what is real bhava and what is duplicate bhava, you know. Uh, duplicate bhava, <coughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur has uh, narrated a very nice story of duplicate bhava. <laughs> there, were, there are two temples in one village, two temples. So, in one temple, one a uh, professional singer was invited. Ah. Then he started singing, you know, by singing, if he sings for one minute, he cries for ten minutes, you understand. But that was not original, bha- I mean, that was not the real bhava, <laughs> you understand. He was singing one minute and crying ten minutes. <laughs> Suddenly he fell down and did an acting a drama of being fainted. So then, all people gathered, they are glorifying, oh, so nice song, so nice song, so nice, so deep devotion. Ah, so they are glorifying. So the other temple team, they became little envious. Oh, that temple has become famous by inviting some special singer, you know. So then they invited another singer, more expert. So the contact was that. At that time, uh, 25 paisa was very costly, you know, 25 paisa. So we'll give you 25 paisa, but you have to cry more than that singer. Because of that singer, I mean, that temple has become famous. So we have to cry uh, more than that singer. We'll give you 25 paisa. He said, yes, I'll do. And I'll make your temple more famous than that temple. And it was summer, you know, summer in Bengal is quite, you know, hot. <laughs> so, uh, where they made the pandal, actually it was a sandy area, full of sand. 
and in summer sand becomes very hot you know so he did not notice all these things he started singing hare then after telling and after singing for few seconds he fainted and by mistake he fell on hot sand very hot sand <laughs> uh, he thought he'll remain there for one hour but he so baba it is impossible to stay even for a minute <laughs> then he jumped and ran into the green room you understand so the temple authority became very upset ah and nobody nobody liked it what kind of fainting he fainted and jumped and entered into the green room so everybody was criticizing this is this was false and the temple authority temple mahanta he was also angry what is this he, we paid you 25 paisa he said how long the emotion of 25 paisa can continue <laughs> it is only emotion of 25 paisa how long it can continue <laughs> so like this he was arguing so in this way uh, his divine grace bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur by narrating this story he explained that you know we should not have artificial emotion uh, drama dramatic emotion we should have real emotion and krishna takes is very seriously if you have real emotion even if you don't have any uh, arrangement for performing uh, rituals gorgeously but if you have pure love pure emotion krishna takes it very seriously demigods also takes it very seriously so king yudhishthira he had that kind of love and emotion so the rituals were there he was perfect ritualistically and he was perfect in his emotion devotion and he sat down at the bank of ganges for performing for listening hari katha that was not yet decided they he will ask the uh, sages present there they will suggest and then sukadeva goshami would come so in this way he will start listening hari katha but demigods understood that this person king king parikshit is a really sincere person and his emotion and devotion is very pure so they got attracted in those days demigods are attracted to the earth planet because there were some advanced devotees so because parikshit maharaj was very advanced in devotion so the demigods also they showered flowers and uh, i mean they played uh, dundubhi dundubhi is a divine i mean it is celestial um, drums uh, so in this way they honored uh, parikshit maharaj it is also said that the letter on the came with nectar pot of nectar but parikshit maharaj did not accept that nectar uh, we see another devotee who did not accept nectar lord shiva when there was samudra manthan uh, when there was samudra manthan then he drank the poison you know he drank poison so somebody requested him that you wait for few hours after some time there will be nectar you can drink nectar also so she was said not required not required he drank the nectar and uh, he drank poison and he kept it on his throat that's that's why he is called nilakantha so why he did not care for ne- nectar because he was enjoying better nectar what is that better nectar hari katha krishna katha so if you enjoy krishna katha you don't need that nectar ah even even gururadev gururadev he got nectar pot on his hand you know he defeated indra soldiers and he collected nectar pot but narayan saw that he is not eating he is not eating nectar he is carrying this nectar to, for his uh, brothers uh, brothers i think yeah snake brothers but he himself could eat it was in his hand he could take little nectar but he did not eat this is renunciation ah so anyway so when parikshit maharaj was sitting and he was ready for enjoying nectar of hari katha the demigods became attracted demigods are all devotees of krishna Uh, there is no atheist among the demigods and they showered flowers they played uh, dundubhi uh, one time somebody asked prabhupad do you sometimes like to meet with the demigods <laughs> prabhupad said what 
no do you like to meet with the demigods why i should meet the demigods demigods will come to meet me <laughs> it is fact if indra and prabhupad meets together indra should offer obeisances to prabhupad we should understand that how much devotees are honored and what is the i mean the devotee's position is higher than demigods that's why bhakti vinu thakur said kita janma hau jathato adas bohir mukha brahma janme nahi as i don't want to become brahma without devotional attitude without devotional emotion i don't want to become brahma but if i have devotional attitude if i have devotional mood i rather prefer to become an insect in the house of a pure devotee so devotional mood is so important devotional emotion is so important that devotee do not care to care to become even brahma they do not care to become even indra ah so if we can i mean have the devotion devotional mood pure love then you are successful even if you are an insect even if you are insignificant person beggar ah like uh, sudama bipra was a beggar but because he had devotional you know emotion that's why he attracted krishna's heart so we must understand that krishna is bhavagrahi he considers only our devotional mood of course external things we try to maintain as far as possible uh, due to laziness we should not ignore as external rules and regulations and rituals but krishna doesn't give much importance to your external things krishna give importance only to your mood and emotion thank you very much i think i don't see the time due to reflection of light what is the time now huh oh so that means 15 minutes left so should we continue discussion or maybe question answer we start question answer okay prabhu ji hare krishna thank you prabhu hare krishna i have a comment and a question there's a second part to the story of harikesh maharaj then harikesh maharaj said uh, well what about my consciousness like if i eat meat what about my consciousness prophet said damn your consciousness preach so he was very strong on that point yeah <laughs> now we hear that in in crisis situation in emergency situation we can make exceptions and change the rules so then the question comes what is crisis situation what is emergency situation because our mind is ready to justify my mind is ready yeah, to justify very nice point very nice point so, so yeah. where do we draw the line yeah like i can see sometimes i may be in a temple and a guest comes and prasadam is in the deity room but i'm not completely clean but i should give prasadam to that guest because otherwise they'll leave and they you know have a bad impression <laughs> so i may go in there to get it for service like govinda prabhu he stepped over lord chaitanya for service but not for sense gratification yeah. but where do you, where do you categorize emergency because it's kind of a very vague concept in kali yuga it seems like every moment is an emergency <laughs> yeah actually if your uh, real standard of devotion is high then krishna will help you to distinguish between the real emergency and you know, fake emergency you understand if your devotion is on high standard just like govinda what he did he uh, practically speaking he jumped over chetana mahaprabhu's body but chetana mahaprabhu did not mind because he understood that his mood was to serve so krishna will understand your mood sometimes suppose you as you, example you have given that you wanted to give some prasadam from deity room and you are not clean so at that time you can do mantra snan you know mantra snan bathe in mind if it is emergency case and if it is really needed for preaching you can take mantra snan and give prasadam to the guest sometimes i think krishna will understand your mood krishna is uh, he is sitting within our heart so he knows what is your mood krishna will understand 
but we have to be careful as far as possible that we don't cheat ourselves <laughs> Hare Krishna Hare Bhava. also in if possible sometimes if we have chance to ask our Guru Maharaj if we have chance to ask our Guru Maharaj Maharaj such is, such is the situation what should I do so sometimes Guru Maharaj can guide you if you don't have chance to ask then at least ask your Paramatma super soul and then he will guide you <laughs> Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavad Pranam. Prabhuji, here Sorry. it is mentioned about the demigods. I have heard that the lifespan of the demigod is uh, one kalpa, means 1000 chatur yuk. Is okay. it correct, Prabhu? Lifespan of Span demigods, of demigod um, is, uh, I, I, I don't know exactly, but their lifespan is different, no? All lifespan are not same. In upper planet, it starts, I heard it starts from 10,000 years minimum. Maximum, the upper, more upper you go, from Indra, from Sargaloka you go to Maharaloka, it is more, duration of lifespan is more. Then you go to Janaloka, it is more, like this. Uh, but uh, Chatur Yuga, I don't think this is the lifespan of the demigods. Uh, 1000 Chatur Yuga, 1000 Chatur Yuga, yeah. Uh, 1000 Chatur yeah. Uh, I don't know, Prabhuji can say, our Achinta Chaitanya Prabhu. Uh, <laughs> so I have also, to... I have also heard that, Yeah, so six months, six months, like this you can calculate 100 years. Six months, Uttarayan is the daytime of demigods. Six months, Dakshinayan is nighttime of demigods. So calculate like this 100 years. So then you will find the exact duration of life of the demigods. Mm. Thank you so much. Any other question? I just wanted to say that you made a good point that if there is an opportunity then one can consult one spiritual master. Mm. But I just wanted to add to that that if one, one, one does not have the opportunity to consult one spiritual master because uh, Srila Prabhupada has created the International Society for Krishna Consciousness and there are so many advanced Vaishnavas. Mm. So we can always consult someone yeah. if we have the opportunity. Shiksha Guru. Have, yeah. Shiksha Guru. Yeah. You not can me. also consult advanced devotees, senior devotees. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Even if Shiksha Gurus are not available, still we can always cons consult someone more advanced than us. Okay, nice point. Any question from Mataji's side? Any comment or question? Sir, time is still there, no? Okay, you have any more comment or question? <laughs> what is the time now? Five minutes left. So better to enjoy five minutes. <laughs> Vishwajit, do you have any question? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a question from backside. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you for the nice class. Hare Krishna. Um, in this verse, the demigods are praised very much, and you will not find any atheists among demigods. Um, also, it's mentioned that uh, they become happy with a devotee when a devotee makes progress and sometimes they arrange and help the devotee in their spiritual progress. Um, but elsewhere in Bhagavatam, we also find that uh, the demigods are creating challenges for devotees as well. And elsewhere, we find that uh, everyone is pretty much a demon in the material world other than a devotee of the Lord. So. Uh, Prabhupada also mentioned that even the demigods, they also have some demoniac nature because they are not completely pure and uh, only a devotee of the Lord who is completely pure is, is practices complete non-violence. Mm -hmm. um, we find sometimes devotees, they tend to depend on demigods for even they think that uh, they can help in certain regards, could be material arrangements, could be marriage, uh, wanting to get a good husband or wife or um, we see demo devotees actually worshipping them, celebrating like Ganesh Chaturthi in their houses like Vaishnavas or I mean at least in our movement they are doing this. What is your advice on how the practicing devotees should deal with demigods? Yeah, according to Bhagavatam, Akama Sarva Kama Ba Muksha Kama Udaradhi Tibreno bhakti yogena jajetu purushangparam. If you have desire or no desire, 
akama sarva kama moksha kama if you are desirous to achieve moksha liberation under all circumstances you should worship only the supreme personality of god it now regarding worshiping demigods even the gopis they worshiped kattayoni but the target was krishna ah our his holiness bhakti purushottam maharaj says that one devo- i think some devotees are worshiping vishakarma i think in bbt uh, so maharaj said he is our life member <laughs> vishakarma is our life member you know is con life member <laughs> sometimes we worship life member you know when they come we give nice prasadam uh, we try to please them so sometimes we may try to please demigods or by chance you suddenly su- suppose you know durga puja is going on and you suddenly crossing one pendel durga pendel with your rickshaw and you can offer obeisances to durga but asking krishna bhakti please give me devotion to lord krishna and uh, demigods also sometimes commits offenses to the lord to vaishnavas uh, indra committed offense to durvasha muni uh, nal kubar and hayak uh, what is manigrip co- committed offense to narad muni uh, so it happens but they are ready to rectify the devotees can rectify when they understand they understand their mistake they are ready to rectify but demons they don't want to rectify Ah, uh, they would demigods sometimes commit mistake. Ah, uh, Indra committed offense to king. Ah, uh, Indra committed offense to Krishna at the time of you know Govardhan past time. Ah, uh, Brahma committed offense to Krishna by stealing ca- calves and cows and cowherd boys. So they do, but this is part of Krishna's past time, and they are ready to rectify. Ah, uh, but our target should be. somehow other even if we want to please demigod the target should be to uh, achieve love of god and love of um, krishna that should be the target i don't know whether i got your question or not but what i understood i tried to explain they are right so i shall i can stop here thank you very much granthara simad bhagavatam ki samavat vishnu bhakta brind ki nitai gaur pramanandi hari hari bol